Welcome, welcome, one and all, to Dynamite D&D. It's been a while since we've seen you last. This is the November session of Dynamite D&D. Once again, I am Steve, the Dungeon Master. You've stumbled upon my little project, playing D Dungeons & Dragons, live, in person, with four friends. It's uh, going to be a good time. We've been going at this campaign for several months now, and we hope you have a good time. I'm going to go around the table real fast, and everybody's going to introduce themselves. We're going to start with none other than Sam. Say hi, Sam, you will Luke. Hey, what's up, everyone? I am Sam. I go by Sam Hears, but today you can call me Robert Ribbons, Air Genasi, and Monster Slaying Ranger. Thank you. Sam Luke playing Robert Ribbons, the Air Genasi. Moving on down the line, we're going to go to Aaron next. Let's say hi to Aaron, everybody. Hi, Aaron, everybody. I am playing Corv Corvidus, and I am a bard, big old black bird. Still kind of young, and um, ready to get this this campaign going in the cold. Aaron playing a Aracocra bard. Next up on the docket is none other than Paige. Hi. Say hi, Paige. Hello. My name is Paige, and my character's name is Eden, Corpse Nodder of the Gildengard clan. She's a barbarian, Goliath, level six, and she's ready to rage out on some dudes. Paige Law playing Eden, Corpse Nodder, Gildengard, Goliath Barbarian. Last but not least, the man, the myth, the legend, Curly himself. Say hi, Curly. Hello, everybody. I am Drunk Kids Gaming, also known as Curly, and I'm playing TV's favorite, Hazel Groundswell, <laughs> today. She makes sparks. She's a sorceress. She's level six. She's lovely. Lots of lightning. You'll see. I have some spell slots left. <laughs> Unless I die. Curly playing Hazel, a half-elf oh, sorcerer. Last time on Dynamite D&D, the heroes finally had a bit of a respite after dealing with the whole ordeal with the witnesses. They finally met up with the Moon Dwarf clan and learned that their clan chief had gone into a desolate ma ruins that had been found inside the Moonstone Mines. The heroes entered into the ruins and discovered an ancient maze of 100 tortures, a remnant from the ancient Tiefling Empire. They entered the ruins of the maze and overcame heinous challenges tailored to each one of their worst fears. After completing their own challenges, they stumbled into the trials and tribulations of Rada the Unbending, the Moon Dwarf clan chief. They chased away some cockroaches that were terrifying her into uh, paralyzing fear. They rescued Rada and extricated her from the maze of 100 tortures, rendezvoused with the old dwarf Faragor who had led them into the ruins. And we're celebrated, uh, were celebrated by the rest of the Moon Dwarfs for having rescued their clan chief. They lamented the loss of three of their uh, clan members who had gone in with Rada, but they were glad that she had come out safely. The clan chief, Rada the Unbending, revealed to the heroes that a ancient relic had been passed down from clan chief to clan chief for a thousand years. It was a fragment of a spell scroll a fragment of a scroll that detailed the ritual from ancient Arcosia. Petunia took a look at this ancient scroll and realized immediately that it was part of the ritual to transfer the soul of the scion between different bodies. Petunia thereby realizing that that is probably how her consciousness has been passed down throughout these several thousand years from ancient Arcosia. But the ritual scroll was incomplete. It did not detail everything, but it did detail that the gem used in the process was a Heaven's Pearl. A Heaven's Pearl being an unbelievably rare geological phenomena when blue lightning atop the Starspire Mountain strikes an outcropping of mithril that has been coated in condensation from the chilled mountain air. Rada said that they were probably never going to find one. She'd never seen it in her lifetime, but they were welcome to try. And she gave the heroes some treasure scarab larvae that they could use to help locate rare minerals atop the Starspire. 
After receiving this, the heroes began to prepare for a treacherous mountain journey. They acquired warm clothing and climbing gear, ropes, rations, all manner of uh, preparations. But before they left, they had a grand party. They had, a, they had an excess of meat that Eden had harvested from the forest. Just chopped down that old meat tree, carried it back. <laughs> and they had a big old party inviting several of the townsfolk that had helped them along the way during the whole witnesses ordeal. Uh, it was a grand old time. Everybody uh, laughed, shared stories, ate, drank. It was a great time. In the morning, the heroes headed out for the Starspire Mountains. They began the ascent encountering points of interest along the way, one of which being a small shrine to Moradin. Uh, they evaded some woodland creatures. They evaded some trolls. They evaded a rock that had been flying around. Robert, the expert in mountain wilderness survival, was leading them away from danger left and right. They bypassed a half-ogre that was guarding a bridge by giving him some of their personal trinkets. He allowed them to pass. Uh, as they made it into the snowy regions, it had been... A couple of weeks since they had been on the road out in the mountainous terrain, away from civilization for the longest time they had been in a long time, they began to track the presence of elementals. Robert, having a penchant for elementals, recognized the signs that they inhabited the area, steered the party away from the elementals, and came to a high point in the mountains, far, far, far away from civilization, they decided to use one of their treasure scarab larvas. They fed it a pound of meat, waited, and it hatched and scuttled away as it searched for the nearest rare mineral. They followed the treasure scarab to the mouth of a cave that was guarded by several ice elementals. They defeated the ice elementals and discovered the body of a dwarf frozen in the snow. The dwarf had a scroll tube on him, which contained a uh, spell scroll and a diamond. The diamond refracted light, and when the light shone, shone through the diamond, it revealed words and patterns illuminated. Sorry. The diamond possessed inside of it a letter that was scribbled out as apparently the last words and testament of this dwarf. It said it was the, uh, uh, in memory of the mountainous three, naming three familiar sounding dwarf names, familiar to some of us anyway. <laughs> they took the spell scroll and uh, as they rotated the diamond, one facet of the diamond illuminated words, another facet of the diamond illuminated a makeshift map. And the hero saw upon the map a crown topped with an extremely large gemstone of some sort, somewhere apparently within the cave that stood in front of them. The heroes entered the cave and went down, down, down a long and winding ice passage. A cavern of ice awaited them, and inside the cavern they discovered a strange ice creature that was trapped in a block of ice that resembled a humanoid head. The creature was exceedingly bored and glad to see the adventurers because he played a game of marbles with them. Several of the adventurers missed their shots in the marble game and as such summoned little ice elementals that attacked them. They fought their way past the ice elementals, and now we find them here, having just completed the battle. Once again, we go to the ice caverns. Here are the ice caverns for your viewing pleasure. The creature in the block of ice, who had named itself as Sokol, reappears after your battle and starts chuckling. <laughs> <laughs> a grand spectacle. Was this I haven't had this much fun in years. You, you just you have fun by hurting people. I did not hurt you. I merely observed your battle. Where did the ice creatures come from? Oh, I summoned them. Then you hurt us. Uh, it wasn't me. It was them. <laughs> a weird way of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but a promise is a promise. I shall open the way for you. Uh, how many people on average get past you uh, in a year? Oh, <laughs> I couldn't begin to keep track. I haven't seen anybody in the, an unknown amount of time. I don't, I don't experience the passage of time the same way as you do. But as a reward for you, completing my challenge and giving me a bit of fun, here's something that someone once dropped a long, long time ago. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Health potion. <laughs> 
Nice. Oh. And <laughs> as you take the health potion, uh, the walls of ice that had blocked the passageways melt away. <laughs> well, I guess thanks. Oh, no, thank you. Do you have any idea what is past here? I have not a clue. Is there any way I can help you get home to your, your, your plane? Can you summon a portal to the elemental chaos? I might come back when I can. I don't think you will. <laughs> Let's be real here. <laughs> By the time you leave this chamber, you won't even remember my face. Uh, yeah, I don't want to lead the way, so you guys want to go? Yeah, let's yeah. get... Well, there's nowhere else to go. It's kind of cold in it's here. move. Is it warmer One than might it is say outside? it's so cold in here. You travel through the corridor made of ice, leaving Sokol behind as he bobbles around inside his humanoid ice head. You enter into a chamber where two large spires of ice jut from the floor. Countless small ice stalactites hang from the ceiling. As you enter, you see floating in the air between the two spires is the frozen body of an emaciated dwarf clutching a silver scroll tube. Might be another one of your brothers. I have no connection to them besides just fighting about them now. But we are getting one step closer if this map's to be believed. All right, can I go? S I'm going to fly up and check him out and see if so I can take okay the scroll. It's okay to cry, Robert. I'm going to try to gr would. grasp the silver scroll from his dead body. Straight up. Corv, as you fly towards the body of the dwarf, reaching out for the scroll tube, you feel your hands squelch mm. into a sickly, gelatinous liquid. <gasps> oh, God. Oh, oh no! guys don't don't drink it in okay, i'm done guys you, See you later. take six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thir thirteen oh, acid damage oh. and you are engulfed by the transparent form of a gelatinous cube Jeez. everybody roll for initiative oh, I hate <laughs> as corv is engulfed by the gelatinous cube you see two of the stalactites on the ceiling fall uncurl into ice elementals it is a surprise round. Yeah, Corv got the jump on that cube, let me tell you. <laughs> I have learned nothing. <laughs> As the ice mephits uncurl from their perch and they flutter down on icy wings, they swoop towards the party that has just entered the room. The one here is going to exhale some frost breath. Robert, you take three cold damage. Eden takes half of three, which is rounded down one. Uh, that was the ice. Uh, the cube! has engulfed Corv. You take damage at the start of the cube's turn. 14 <gasps> acid damage. Top of the round, Hazel. All right, well, I'm gonna cast Shatter. 21 uh, thunder damage. Woo! One of the methods is shattered. As the thunderous boom fills the closer. chamber, large, dangerous chunks of ice fall from the ceiling. Everybody except Corv, make a dex save. You all pass. Yay! One chunk of ice hits the ice method. After Hazel, uh, is it me? It an is engulfed creature poisoned. can try to escape by taking an action. Escape by strength check. 12. Twelve. You can escape and enter a space of its choice with a space of your choice within five feet of the cube. And I'm gonna Above heal it. myself. Where? After core is gonna be eaten. Ready. I'm going to attack the ice elemental in front of me. It shatters. Bright radiant energy illuminates its ice and is quite beautiful looking until it uh, shatters into oh, oh, wow. fine Thank you, Eden. ice <laughs> dust. Thank you, Eden, a display. Robert. I'm going to double move. Cube is first going to move, and after it moves, it's going to use its engulf action, where it moves up to its speed and then engulfs somebody. Uh, Yo, Robert, make a dex save. You narrowly escape being engulfed awesome. by the cube. Uh, Hazel's gonna come out of her little hidey hole, and uh, Ray of Frost is bad boy. Ten cold damage, and its movement is slowed. Corn to be Corv. I'm gonna just cast some vic vicious mockery. I'm going We're to looking. throw a javelin at the gelatinous cube. Uh, Slayer's player, I'm gonna attack once. You bay. Speed is reduced oh, by boy. ten. Hazel's gonna run. Ray of Frost. <laughs> and its speed is reduced by 10. I'm going to uh, cast Vicious Mockery. I think you know what? I'm going to try that. Is there any ice that I can pick up, Steve, and throw? Sizable chunks that look piercing? <laughs> you can throw a chunk of ice as an improvised ranged weapon, yes. Critted. I critted. Improvised crit. 
After your attack, you can choose to grapple your opponent if you have a free hand or attempt to shove your opponent if both your hands are in use. Do you wish to do either of those? No, I don't want to get close. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to move and then do two more arrow attacks. Oh, nice. It deflates? (laughs) The cube expires. You defeated the gelatinous cube and the ice elementals. Yeah. The emaciated body of the dwarf is uh, slick with gel, but free from the cube. Yes, everyone be on your guard. I'm going to check the body of my supposed possible brother. Is there any... Where um, do you search? I'm looking up, actually. I want to see if there's any, like... Several of the ice stalactites have broken off in the aftermath of the thunder. I am checking the bro. You see the emaciated body of a frozen dwarf, long dead, clutching a silver scroll tube. Attempt to t- retrieve the tube. You grab the silver scroll tube and you turn it in your hands. You see it bears an inscription to Fardverm from Valiente with affection. The other one was from Valiente as well. Inside the scroll tube, there is a second level scroll of bark skin. On the, um, the, scroll, the other scroll tube, it said to totally Curdverm from Valiente, your friend. So Valiente must have given these kids something. Sent them to their deaths. Valiente. Looking for treasure. They are treasure hunters. So so. Fortune one. hunters, explorers, sons of Scourgeverm, sons of Maglada. There is only one way forward, and I do. Uh, I look around. Do I? Does Robert see the uh, beetle anywhere in this room? You detect no signs I mean, of the beetle on the slick, hard, featureless ice floor. Is there only this one way out? Correct. All right. Just like the mob sees. I'll go first. <laughs> Oh, another one. Good. <laughs> they always travel in packs. Eden walks into, walks face first into another gelatinous cube, which had not moved. Can oh, I do it's invisible. 14 oh. acid damage. Roll for initiative. First Using... up is the surprise round from the cube. Oh. First up, sorry, it wasn't on it the list. It already got me. <laughs> 23 acid damage. Oh, I'm dead. At the start of your turn, you can make a strength check to escape. If I were Another dead. creature can also use their action to help you escape. I'm at negative eight. Eden has been rendered really unconscious. It. Oh. It's Eden's turn, technically. So. Did I make a, what's it called? Like a death, save. death save. Death save? Yes. Okay, seven. One step closer to death. Start of the cube's turn again. Hazel, make a deck save. Ten. You are also engulfed. Uh, I'm rolling a health and liver. also a vicious Top mockery. Liver, thank for, you. Let's do the vicious mockery first on the cube. Eden is conscious inside the cube yet again. As you approach the cube, you can see droplets of its gel dripping off and sizzling on the ice. You Ouch. see that it is okay. acidic. You don't want to touch it. It's like an it's like an inside I'm gonna out alien. I'm going to do a strength alien. check to try to pull Eden out. Yeah, 11. That I is know. a fail, and you take 10 acid damage. I am going to grab a hold of Eden and cast Thunderstep. I'm going to teleport myself and a, a person who's willing I'm willing. <laughs> uh, to any place I see within range. Uh, 25 thunder Ooh. damage. Hazel grabs Eden's ankle and teleports out of the cube, <laughs> sending a thunderous kaboom throughout the chamber. Everybody roll a deck save as more chunks of ice are knocked loose from the ceiling. Korv gets hit by a chunk of ice. Ouch. As does the cube. Eden gets hit by a chunk of ice. I'm pretty far back now. Thank you for getting me out of there. I'm going to throw... Can I pick up a nice chunk and throw it again? Yeah. Robert, make a deck save. 26. But. Yar, evade the engulfing cube. After the cube. Yar. All right. So I'm going to um, uh, use healing on action on my dear Eden. How many spell slots do you have left? Four. Six healing Thank and you. vicious mockery. And I will disengage. Hazel's going to disengage. I'm going to throw... My hand axe at it. After Eden. Cube. Uh, that's cube time. Uh, Robert, roll a deck save. Oh, Same number, 26. Corv. I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery, and I'm going to give Bardic Inspiration. Uh, yeah, disengaging. <laughs> and Hazel's going to Ray of Frost. Is there more ice for me to throw? <laughs> yes. This is going to be the last cube of ice that is available. <laughs> I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery. And I'm going to uh, heal Eden just in case, because I'm scared. Three spell slots left. Two uh, archery attacks. Yeah, everybody start picking up ice chunks. You successor resolve combat. Bring the ice chunks with you. They save the day. So did you say my javelins are okay to pick up again? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to go get those. A little water on (laughs) there. And my hand axe. 
Okay. We were ready to leave this room, so let's leave this room. Let's go. As you travel through the ice corridors, the ice before you gives way to a wide chasm, impossibly deep and resonating with low howling of moving air. Oh, a tall spire of ice rises out of the darkness below. A narrow ledge wraps around the perimeter of the emptiness, slick with water droplets trickling down from the roof above. Compared to the rest of the cavern, this room feels slightly warmer. Three openings can be seen leading in three separate directions away from the chamber. Yeah. We want to go this way or this way. Yeah, mm, if we want to follow know. the map, unless we want to go to the skull demon at the bottom. I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna lead. I can pick you up. I have boot tips, so I won't you, you be less on, likely to slip. On walking, and I'll just tie myself to you if I slip. And I'll hammer pittens in. So nope. you can fly, and then yeah, we can. Okay, I, 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 I want. I want to go this way. I want to go take the uh, left. Go take a look, see. First to act is Robert. Robert, what are you doing? I'm gonna go this way, and stop. Move one square at a time. Five, <laughs> ten. Oh. I look down. Is the ground giving way beneath me? The air cracks forming on the ice. All right. Okay. We don't go that way. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I'll go try to go this way. 20, 25, 30. <laughs> Double move. 35. Oh, I'm just making it bad for everybody, huh? I don't know. <laughs> uh, back I'll up here. You. I'm going to start putting a pit in here. <laughs> you hammer a pit into the wall? Yes. So I'm going to cautiously move my way behind... Robert and walk a little bit fat past Robert. <laughs> oh, do you have Hazel, what are you doing? Wait, can uh, I take one of your pins, fly across, and just pin it down? And in case it. you guys fall, you'll have a rope to hold I'm on gonna, to. Uh, Hazel's moving next to Eden and tying herself to Eden with the best ship knots or she's ever known. Can you guys known. shimmy across instead right. of walking across and sh breaking everything? Good. What are you doing, Corv? I would like to um, take one of his whatever word you keep saying, and a pitten and, 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 and a hammer, hammer, and I'd like to fly with rope over to this one over here. That's what we're going to yeah, be I guess we can tie here. them across. <laughs> <sighs> the ground crumbles beneath your feet <laughs> and gives way. I'm oh. flying. No, no. Okay, so fine. I go ahead and just Do continue hammering. Want. I'd like to tie a knot to this pitten. If Corv tied the other side, then you should go across. Use your harness your to harness anchor on. yourself to the rope. Oh, God. I, <laughs> oh, God. I do that since I have a harness and I tie a hazel knot. Pray to your Actually, dogs. I don't want to go first. I have backup <laughs> ideas. You guys all go first. I will go last. I'm going to attach the rope and try to get across with my harness, hopefully. Roll strength check. Athletics. Roll athletics check. There it is. <laughs> 14. You make it halfway. Roll another athletics check. 12. A sudden updraft of an unexpected thermal wave of heat causes you to lose your focus and your hand slips, roll a dexterity saving throw. 25. You manage to grab the rope and your feet are dangling underneath you and manage to crawl yourself back up onto the rope. Make another athletics check. I'm gonna levitate. Woo! And pull, use the rope that I had my grip on and just... Could have done that the whole time. <laughs> no, I don't have levitate anymore. <laughs> Robert made it across. Eden! I'm going to take Hazel's harness, get up on that rope, and start going across. Roll an athletics check. 18! So steamboat Eden. <laughs> <laughs> you make it halfway. Roll a second athletics check. 19! I just imagine. Oh, still hold on. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Roll d d20. Long strides. 9. As you step onto the ice on the far ledge, the ice gives way underneath you, I'm, and you I'm begin to fall. Roll a dexterity saving throw. 15. As the ice gives way underneath you, you sidestep Ooh. and avoid falling into a pit Praise of endless darkness. Uh, Hazel wants Petunia to go. Don't fall, Petunia. Petunia asks Corv to fly back a harness. Oh, yeah, you can have my harness, right, I guess. All right, here you go. Petunia puts on a harness <laughs> and begins to shimmy over. Makes it halfway. Mampania. She does not make it <gasps> the full way. Okay. She falls off the rope and is dangling by a thread. Uh, oh, what's the jumping Corf. mechanic again? Can the knot throw another that rope? is holding her onto her harness holds. Oh. She is dangling in space. Otherwise, we She's are screwed. She's attempting to hoist herself back up. Patonia! Hazel! 
Uh, so I latch on and I try to get to Petunia. Roll an athletics. Uh, I'm going to use two sorcery points to bend luck no. and add a d4 to this. So 15. You make it to Petunia. I want to tell everyone to go into the cave. <laughs> okay. Let's go. <laughs> thunder step. A thunderous <laughs> boom oh resonates throughout the entire ice chamber, echoing and reverberating <laughs> through the emptiness below. You hear yeah. the sound traveling as it ricochets back and forth oh, down a bit. the tube. Uh, the rope takes 3d10 damage. The rope does. <laughs> no! The rope breaks. That'd you cool. hear like a bestial roar from down below. We've committed to a cave entrance, so we're going to go into it. You enter into an empty chamber Bullocks. with three other Skew. tunnels leading Skew. out of the room. Three mm. tunnels. Roll a survival check, Robert. What I'm trying to, to, to discern is what is the path that lines up with the map. 24. Uh, if you're comparing the light of the map to this room, they do not match. Give me a, can I hold the javelin? Can I have to see the javelin? I walk forward with the javelin in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of our entire campaign. <laughs> and That's can mean. I see down the, the corridors at any distance? You only see the ice corridors. You okay. cannot see rooms within your line of sight Wait, ooh, down can, the corridors. Can Hazel try something? Hazel, uh, Hazel turns around and wants to run out the other room that we just came through and see if it's the same room. Yes, it's the same room. Okay, guys, it's not a weird, crazy labyrinth of... Um, Thank goodness. Okay, sorry. That, that's all we needed to know. The <laughs> previous room feels warmer than it did a second ago. Oh, sh Nikes. Is something Something's coming, coming closer. Can I, I want to listen... Well, let, let's just use the general direction and uh, and yeah. go this that way? way. Yeah. You arrive in another chamber. Okay. Which <laughs> has three other exits. What's the temperature? Oh, this room is cold. Okay, this, I'm walking well, around what, the perimeter maybe, looking for invisible things. Maybe the crown's in here and we can't see it. I'm just going to walk around a little bit. Maybe. Well, look at the roof oh. of the room. Is there any discernible things? Stalactites? Like a numbers? arrow? There are icicles upon the roof, definitely. Any pattern? Uh oh. The floor underneath your feet begins to tremble, and you hear a familiar sounding, a monstrous roar. <laughs> a screen accurate creature bursts forth from the floor nice. of the ice. Blood Roll for blood. initiative. Corv is up. Oh, God. Corv sees a. Let's test this out! Serpentine insectoid monstrosity with fins arcing out of its serpentine neck, uh, chitinous jaws, insectoid eyes, and centipede-like legs along the length of its very large body. Intense heat radiates what? off of its spikes on its back, glow red with intense heat. I'm going to go try to dagger his... I'm gonna try this out. As you strike out with your weapon, mm -hmm. the heat from its body <laughs> rolls over you. <sighs> you take nine, <laughs> nine fire damage. I'm dead. Now you can't, no, now you're unconscious. Eden, the creature is going to bite at you with its massive jaws. Ooh. Jump! <laughs> you sidestep its bite. Slayer's prey, and uh, just start wailing on him. Oh, I guess I am really close. Yes, please disengage. <laughs> And I'm going to go on to a reg. Shocking grasp. Hazel grasps the heated body of the creature, taking five fire damage. Uh, Top of the round. Corv, save for death. 17. You're one step closer to not dying. After Corv is Remoraz. Oh, burrows into the ice. Oh, crap. Oh, <laughs> oh we can't see it. Okay. <laughs> uh, good berries. You have one HP and you have 10 good berries with which you can use... As an act, you can use an action to take one. one. Okay. Eden is going to prepare to see the thing. So I'm going to stand in ready, and if it comes, I'm going to great sword it. If an enemy comes within your range, you will attack. Thank you. Uh, Hazel's going to move back towards the wall and ready a ray of frost. As soon as that worm pops up, she's going to blast it. Ready in action for Hazel after Hazel. Yep, I'm gonna heal. That's my bonus action. And my action was to eat a good berry. 
Ooh, what's my action still happen? My ray of frost is... Disadvantage, because there is an enemy within five feet of you. It's Your ray frost. of frost oh. evaporates before it makes what contact it? with its oh, body. Oh, potatoes. I, I thought it would do I harder damage. Uh, the remoras has appeared, and now it is going to bite Hazel. It is resistant to cold. Okay. Ten to hit Hazel. I just not hit Hazel. Two shots on the guy. Okay. Eden's going to take a run towards the monster. I am raging, so I'm going to rage out on him. Oh, you are no longer raging because you ended your last turn without attacking or taking damage. No more raging then, just the normal. Okay, I got a crit to attack. You're able to maneuver towards your opponent while attack. Same one as before. You can choose to grapple your opponent or shove it if uh, you want. When you hit it, however, you take fire damage. No, I'll just hit him again and die. <laughs> well, there it is. Roll it. There Gotta it take is. damage. That's all I got. You take three fire damage. You know what? Shock and grasp it again. I'm still with... Okay. And I would like to um, double attack with my short bow. Are you trying oh. to kill this thing? Yes, please. <laughs> so let's... You successfully resolve combat. Too, thank you. Hazel walks up and pokes at it. That. Make sure it's still dead. It's freshly dead. Is it moving? And Hazel pokes at it. Can I? Hazel takes three fire damage. Oh. Uh, it was with a plank. It's, it's very ray of Frost it. Is that a cantrip? I Ray of Frost. It's, <laughs> your Ray of Frost evaporates before it hits. Keep Ray of Frosting. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it all day. They're cantrips. They don't say they can. If you wait 10 minutes, it'll be cool enough to touch. Oh, my uh, God. An hour is a short rest. Should we do burn, hit, die? Uh, can we? I'm not a I need lock. to. Let's do a short rest. Short rest. Oh, I can do a song of rest. Robert would like to take a trophy. Uh, take whatever you want. Hmm. What do I take? You I'll take uh, one of the horns. Out. Six. You take a short rest, huddled around the warm body of the Remoras, <laughs> fighting off the cold of the ice chamber. You can see the burrowing tunnel from which it erupted is a gentle slope downwards, down, down uh -oh. into the floor of the chamber. So we could go down. Into the hole it yeah. made. Well, let's try going forward into the next room and yeah, then see come what back. happened. You uh, travel down the corridors. Uh, about five minutes of walking leads you to another chamber with four directional exits. I walk back. Since the map, we since we know now that the map is not accurate. We might as well as see where this thing came from and... You slide down the tunnel left behind by the Remoras. You slide downwards upon a freezing slope as you travel downwards, downwards, downwards. You scrabble at the smooth sides of the tunnel as gravity pulls you ever onward faster and faster. You twist and turn through banking turns, at one point even spiraling upside down in a corkscrew. After several Super more seconds sliding down this ice that feel more like man. minutes, you see... The end of the tunnel, in the form of an ice wall, careening faster and faster towards you. Having oh, reached terminal it. velocity long ago, you <laughs> rocket across the floor and slam into the, five wa the far wall. <laughs> Everybody roll a constitution saving throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take two bludgeoning damage and three cold damage if you rolled 10 or lower. As you pick yourself up, this chamber is a much dimmer than the chambers above being farther underground. The daylight does not penetrate the ice this far down. Your the, 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 passive insight tells you this is most likely where it uh, was resting. We're probably here, When right? you woke it up. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. But there are other holes that look like the same size, like it's been burrowing around and doing stuff. As you investigate the holes, half frozen inside one of the walls nearby is a skeleton that seems to be the size of a dwarf. It appears to be have been gnawed upon by great toothy jaws. Hazel gasps and puts her hands over her mouth and looks at Robert. A scroll tube juts out from the wall, also half frozen, riddled with tooth marks. Robert hugs Hazel. And I try for the scroll. You can pull... Can't you wait a moment? A dwarf has died. <laughs> Robert needs some time. You can pull the golden scroll tube free. The sound of cracking ice echoes loudly in the room <laughs> as you pull Ooh. it free. You see that the golden scroll tube bears an inscription... To Bragverm from Valiente, with love. I'm going to hand it to Robert. Inside, there is a level three spell scroll of Hypnotic Pattern, which is a bard spell. In addition to all of the holes that were made by the Remoras burrowing, you see a natural cave exit. Is there like a, there like a, a nest that it was like sleeping in? Something that's obviously like a... 
You excrement. see a area in the far corner over there that looks as though ice had been melting and finally it reached the bedrock and there is an area of solid rock with ice around it. I want to search that area for any like things it might have gotten from killing. Roll a dexterity saving throw. Eight. You slip and fall headfirst into Remora's excrement. Ew. I clean myself off. <laughs> with what? Uh, ice. Like, I, I, I go out one of the ices and like, you know, if like you like heat it up with your hands, like you can get a little bit of condensation and just like, ah, ah. Because that ah. works real, uh, you can do it, but that doesn't really clean you up very well. And I have a rag. <laughs> I'm sure I have a rag. <laughs> Hold on, let me look at my items. You guys do your own thing. Petunia hands you a towel. Thank you, Petunia. You Guys, the... if we coat ourselves in the in the excrement, <laughs> <laughs> some no, lavender you. leaves might help you with that smell, mm. Hazel. <laughs> Do you have lavender leaves, Petunia? <laughs> she looks at your satchel. Oh, <laughs> that is barbaric. It's a plant; it'll grow she, back. She rolls her eyes. I'm gonna start heading to the exit area. You follow the tunnel, which begins to slope upwards, upwards, upwards for a change. You arrive back in the chamber. Yay. Where a rope is uh, dangling limply from either side. I think we do have more rope. I've got some rope. Or Bear's got some rope. I definitely had some rope, but you know know what I can do. Wait, what is this? (laughs) What just happened? (laughs) What just happened? (laughs) After many trials and tribulations and hazardous situations, (laughs) the heroes manage to climb oh, we, we broke Steve. <laughs> their way over to the far. I blame the Lukes. I'm uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> if you frustrate the DM enough, you'll just get past the puzzle. It's not frustrate. It's just it's a pointless uh, obstacle that you don't need to waste time on. We already did it once. Each time you hammered in a pitten, you had a chance to wake up the Ramores, which is why it mattered. Now uh, it doesn't. Uh, you make it to us. another four-way chamber. Is there any Ramores holes in this with- floor? No. I, I say we keep going straight ahead. From vote with Eden. Make sure you're holding a stick out. I'm as, holding a javelin out. <laughs> as you take the straight and true path, you eventually wind up in the room with all the holes with the remoras that you were in. And after more aimless wandering, you come back to the room with the chasm. You know that this is a maze of similarly looking rooms you know that you will have to use more than just blind luck to get through. You can use your abilities to help you out. Either survival to try and track your progress and see which is the proper pathway to choose. You can try and use perception to notice the fine details of each chamber and uh, guide your way by noticing which paths look different. You can also use arcana and you can also use nature. I think uh, uh, Hazel. Hazel's kind of excited and thinks she can handle this if she if she okay. does like markings and stuff. So, I think Hazel just rush ahead and say, "I got it. I, I can figure this out." Roll a perception check, Hazel. Eleven. Hazel, in her excitement, carves some shallow etchings into the wall. As soon as she looks away from the area where she thought she carved something in, she looks back and can't really find where she was scratching. Anybody else want to try? Uh, survival check. Ten. Korv feels claustrophobic mm. in this Aww. enclosed space away from the open sky. It is difficult for Korv to focus. I'm going to do an experiment with Kavi, and I'm going to send him down one way and me down another way and see if I can use my survival to figure out the maze using Kavi's help. So Kavi is, acts as pretty much your familiar. So you have the ability to sense what he senses as long as you're within 100 feet. I'm going to send him away and see if we meet up in another chamber and see, okay, well, you went this way, <laughs> I went this way. Let's see. So you, you're going to roll a survival check and Kavi is going to roll a survival mm. check, both separate. Get, uh, I got 12 for Eden. All of you go with Eden and then Kavi goes by himself? Yeah. I don't, I don't want us to all split up. Yeah. Kavi got a two. Kavi travels greater than 100 feet away from you. Hi, baby. And you lose your sense of him. Mm -hmm. You all make it back to the chamber with the chasm in it. After all these different tries, I'd like to see if I can discern a subtle difference in each of the caves and find out which ones we haven't been in. As 
you are wandering aimlessly through these caves, you detect the presence of elementals. Yeah, let's. If I can somehow try to they were roll guarding, a survival get check, get closer to the with, elementals. Roll a survival check with whatever your wilderness explorer bonus is. I'm gonna ask Probably Petunia to hum. Check. Can Petunia hum and see if Kavi will come? She will definitely hum a tune. As Petunia hums, you all feel a bolster in your morale, <gasps> and you each gain five temporary hit points. Ooh, Ooh Petunia, did you know you could do that? Hum? You yes, I've been able to hum that. all my life. No. 20. But Robert. Well, she's humming, though. Is able to track the subtle trail of elementals. All of you see merely ice that is frozen. Robert can see the subtle shifts and cracks and telltale signs of magically animated ice. Just as somebody else would see the shifting of dust motes in a sunray, so Robert can see shifting ice flurries, and he Guide is us. able to track the ice elementals into a chamber you haven't seen before. After navigating through countless nearly identical ice chambers, you finally come upon a strange sight. A throne of ice sits along the northern wall, bulky, jagged, and uncomfortable looking. Upon it sits a frozen and emaciated corpse, withered and unrecognizable, but well-preserved otherwise. A heavily tarnished and frost-encrusted crown rests atop its head, featuring a large translucent blue rock mounted at its apex. Several other frozen corpses are scattered in front of the throne, a grim, frozen parody of a lord and his court. Below the ice at your feet, you can make out the colossal bones of some creature that has long since frozen over. You do not see any visible exits from this room, aside from the one you entered from. I'm gonna try to mage hand the crown off the guy. Do it! As your mage hand makes contact with the crown, the room flashes briefly with a uh -oh. blinding white light. Uh oh. As you regain your vision, you see that the corpses have all been encased in ice, and the ice has taken on humanoid shapes. The one that was on the, the throne wears the crown and is larger than the others. Uh, all the other forms, once again, it is a grim parody of a court. The scene is familiar. The lord of the court, his chamberlain, and the courtiers mm. standing at attention. Robert, you hear them speaking in the same primordial dialect of ice elementals. You can pick up, pick up bits and pieces of their conversation. It seems as though the large one fancies itself the ruler of this kingdom. Uh, you can only imagine that the kingdom is the maze you have been traversing. Yeah. After a moment, the Chamberlain speaks up, and you can't really catch much of what it says, but it does gesture towards you, and you pick up the words, special guests. Oh, I was chocolate? getting ready to blow them up. Everyone Do bow, we're their guests. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> uh, Hazel bows. Uh, the Chamberlain speaks what yet again, and it s the only word you can pick up is forward oh. as he gestures. Robert will go forward. I, I, I offer a greeting and I tell them my name is Robert. I'm an adventurer from the surface above. In what <laughs> language? In their language. Uh, and sorry, in primordial. They don't have facial expressions, but the large one kind of cocks its head as you begin speaking. And then the chamberlain begins to uh, talk towards the larger one and you pick up the words commoner. The large one seems to nod its head and uh, gestures thusly as if for you to continue. I ask about for Heaven's Pearl. He emulates the noise that you make when you say Heaven's Pearl, as if it's a foreign word on his tongue. Oh, insertion. it's like talking to fish. And he oh, looks water. back He looks back at the large one, and the large one also shakes its head and then looks back at you. Oh, I show it the silver, um, what's it called? The silver scroll. Case. The large one seems to shift its weight forward as you show it the silver scroll case. And the chamberlain comes forward and takes it from you. Say, you catch the word 
uh, fitting offering, the large one opens the silver scroll tube and places both halves upon its crown and Aww. freezes them to the crown with ice. Whoa. That's cute. <laughs> creating some pretty cheesy looking horns, but then the crown itself is tarnished and old, so it doesn't look exactly regal. Does Robert think this is usual behavior for elementals? In the elemental chaos, they would have some semblance of a hierarchy structure, but they wouldn't emulate human okay, yeah, this tyrannical is, uh... Uh, uh, monarchies with courts and everything. <sighs> It, do we see the uh, beetle anywhere? The, our, the Roll scarab. a perception oh, check. Boom, boom, boom. Twelve. As the uh, elemental, as the king uh, bends forward slightly to <gasps> attach the horns to his crown, you can see the shell of the treasure scarab stuffed into <laughs> the <laughs> ironworks. Very much dead. Good thing we didn't name it. <laughs> it was Billy. <laughs> He did his job, guys. Yeah. The crown is clearly cursed and making this happen. Let's get out of the here. The Chamberlain Those are my thoughts. appears to be asking you a question. I try my hardest to understand. The Chamberlain, you catch the phrases, you catch the words Worth money. great war. Great war? You catch the words Great Lord Frostbane. I mention it to our, our uh, what, the Petunia. Great War Frostbane? Do you know Great anything, King Petunia? Frost. And Resurrection. As he mentions Great Lord Frostbane, all of them lower their heads and rub their hands on the ice at their feet. Hazel Maybe emulates that. that. So he's asking you some sort of question words. relating to that, those, those words Petunia's that you just for- picked up. For thousands of years. Uh, I, I just, I say the Great War has long since ended. The Chamberlain cocks his head and repeats in your own dialect, the Great War has long since ended? Yes. Don't, just don't say anything in Primordial. What? No, he speaks in dialect. Frostbane was a powerful dragon in the war between Arkosia and Baal yeah, is that guy. what is beneath us? It's very possible that they're trying to resurrect the old dragon not knowing that the war is over. Well, that's Guess not... what the war's over? Make something up! <laughs> I tell, them the, I tell them the truth. Do it. That your mm-hmm. elementals, cursed by a crown of evil, and the war has long since ended, and that Frostbane need not be resurrected, we are in a time of peace. I tell the truth! Gold truthful as, as Robert. As simply, Very as nice. concisely as I can. The Chamberlain shouts out, Blasphemy! Take them to the dungeons! Oh. Run back here, Robert. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> All right. Dad, Top of the round. Robert. Robert. The elemental fireworks! The ice, <laughs> the ice elementals Wait. manifest weapons in their hands. Oh, God. Except for the king. He, he cracks his ice knuckles. Slayer's prey, and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to attack the king. Your arrow ricochets slightly ineffectively off of the icy body of the king. The king! He's going after Robert. He's going to do a multi-attack, two fists of ice fury against Robert. Critical attack. You strike with debilitating force. Roll an additional set of damage dice above and beyond your normal critical roll, and the target suffers a permanent injury chosen by the DM. The permanent injury can be healed with an extended rest or a length determined by the time the DM, but the attack leaves a scar. Nice. Hey. I mean, if I live. And the scar that it's going to leave, oh. I'm going to say, yeah, he breaks your nose. Oh. <laughs> you have lost the ability to smell. Homegirl's gonna throw a lightning bolt. The Let's servants come. fail their saving oh. throw. The courtiers also fail their saving throw. Everybody fails. Servants are eradicated. These guys are filled with innumerable cracks and several chunks of their bodies fall off, but they are still standing. They are both going to go after the one that just attacked them. Who is the Chamberlain gonna after? He's gonna, he's gonna let the king do his thing. He is going to fire bolts of ice. Critical fail. Uh, you attack your opponent, you begin to fear that they are the superior combatant. That's right. Disadvantage on your next attack roll against your target. Fucker. I want to sword him. I would like to use that hypnotic pattern. So um, each creature in the area who sees the pattern uh, while charmed, the creature is incapacitated and has a speed of zero. 
We got these ones handled. I want to walk here, cast protection from good and evil, and then I want to fall over and feign dead. The king is insulted that you would try something so <laughs> base against him, and he's going to hit you while you're down. Okay. Ten bludgeoning and five cold. I'm out. Where's tried. the shot? You Listen, tried. You, t- you, you roll oh, a gambit. So that means Protection <laughs> is gone. Protection is gone. Okay. Uh, Hazel's going to walk over to there and hurl or cast her uh, uh, chromatic orb spell scroll that she picked up from the first dwarf. The diamond is going needed for this spell. Uh, so I can say give me a diamond, but then I can do something anyways. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to use my action to uh, use my Pearl of Power to bring a third spell slot back. Squanch. Okay, I'm going to try to hit the king again. I'm going to uh, go for a double at- attack. Move me a little bit. What? Oh, I'm supposed to give you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> You're right. Thanks. <laughs> here, here is, here is the, the diamond. Preach. And I'll give you. I need a fourth thing. I'm just going to try it. Shorbo um, at the king. Thank Death you, save for Robert. Thank you, thank you, Twelve. You are one step closer to not dying. King turns his ire upon Eden. Fists of fury. We got healers. Hazel's up. Whoa. Kami. <laughs> <Kami's back. laughs> My baby's Kami here. Kami doesn't really have combat abilities. Come with this mommy die. <laughs> Thanks, Kami. Chromatic orb, using the diamond worth fifty GP. <laughs> <laughs> Element is it going to be? It's going to be fire. So I hurl a four-inch diameter sphere of energy at a creature that I can see within range. 16 fire damage. 16. Multiplied by two is 32. <gasps> Multiply. The orb careens with the king's torso and sears a chunk of ice into a boiling mist. I'm going to change my tactic here. I'm going to try to grapple the king and bite his neck and like breathe hot breath into my bite. <laughs> Eden fancies herself a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, also the bite and like grappling and hands The strange on. nature of this request, I'll let you do your first attack be the grapple and your second attack be the bite. Okay, 13 <laughs> to bite. Roll a constitution saving throw. 19. Your bite is ineffective. Oh. Gonna try again with my short bow. Saving throw for Robert. 17. One step closer to not being dead. The king is going to attack Eden. Uh, Hazel is going to scurry over to her good dead friend Robert and pour this potion into his mouth. Okay, I'm going to let go and I'm going to sword his face. I'm going to try again with my short bow. All right. Robert's awake. Half my move to stand up. Action to disengage to the moon. And now 15. Yep. Uh, five, ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this man's out. As you run away, the king yells, Blasphemy! Heresy! Blasphemer! First attack on Robert. Oh, boy. Seven bludgeoning. I'm out. Yeah. I'll just double do it this way. Anyways. Uh, sh- the lightning bolt needs to get needs to happen. Dexterity saving throw. What? Fifteen. I'm going to use... Uh, yeah, 15. Bend luck, spend two sorcery points <laughs> to lower his thing by a d4 of three, Ooh, which uh, then 12. doesn't pass the save. Well done. Wow. 27 uh, lightning damage. The electricity courses <laughs> through the king's body. Not boom, boom. And uh, the pattern of electricity leaves behind cracks in his entire body. I'm going to attack it with my grace. After Eden. It's Corv. I'm going to go for my dagger, and I'm going to just ram it right into this dude. So I'm going to move towards him so I can cl- be close right next to him. Death save Robert. This is number three if you make it. Death. One step closer to death. The For king guidance. is going to keep hammering on Hazel. Once he locks on somebody, he's going to keep at it. Uh, Hazel's going Hazel. to retaliate. I'm going to have to just uh, shock and grasp away. No, 11 to hit. That's a miss. I run. 20 to hit. Oh, 11 bludgeoning and 5 okay. cold. Oh. Hazel's down. You done? I got punched in the back of the head when I turned around. That's what happened. Uh, great sword attack. Corb, Corb. is going to try her, his hand at a whip again. We got an 18 to hit. 18 will hit. And then I... This is good. This is good. It's a 5. 
damage. Yay! Yes! Yes! Good job! The little two-pointer! You did it! That's the awesome. pieces of ice were barely Let's being held together by, by a thin guys. layer of moisture as the lightning crackled through its body. The uh, whip from Korv <laughs> knocked them so out of place, yes. and the king crumbles to the ground. Yes. Along with his courtiers. Yay. The crown, however, floats in place as the king crumbles underneath it, and you see a blue glow emanate from the icy shards, swirl up, coalesce, and get absorbed by the gem, which now glows a, a blue azure hue, pulsing slowly. Also, you're level seven. Level seven now! Nice. Petunia Leave stabilizes you both. Thanks, oh, Petunia. Thanks, buddy. My Somebody had to do it. Okay, I'm gonna heal you guys. I, I just have uh, careful with that crown. As 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 Robert mentioned, it might be cursed. I don't want any of us to become a new the next ice king. Crown falls apart into scraps of metal and the oh. scroll tube and the carcass of the scarab and the blue gem. Who's gonna take that gem? Kavi scratches at the ice wall. Going, I'm coming. And you for can you, see Betty. his paw break through the ice. As though a sheet of paper had frozen, he just like paws through it. He, he reveals an exit hole. <laughs> an exit Happy hole. My baby, you're so good at things. And there's still a dragon's corpse below us. Don't worry about it. Let's just go. <laughs> I need to take a <laughs> nap. Boop. I I feel like <sighs> let's go. Outside. Any any magical turd could stumble across this place and resurrect this freaking dragon. Good luck with that. That's not our quest. I want to cave in this whole freaking cave. Well, we gotta get out of here. To, well, for let's, you to let's do try that. to get out. Yeah, I don't even know this how hole you, goes out. How would you do that? I don't know. More lightning? It seems to be. If we had some dynamite. <laughs> D and D. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's, let's just get out of here. I got the gem. What is it? Do we? Uh, Robert would like to uh, leaving. Look at it and, and uh, appraise yeah. it. You, as a expert in elementals, know that this has turned into an elemental gem. You can. Smash it on the ground to release the elemental inside and have it uh, fight alongside you. Ooh. Obviously, ice. The beetle. Is the beetle kaput? Dead. It is yeah. dead. That, it was a very dead. Said. Dead zo. Can I take it? Yeah, you can take uh, You can take the... Does it have a horn? Yes. I snap off a horn and put it in my pocket. <laughs> Did you get a trophy from the king? Ice? A, yeah. I'll just, bring a, I'll just, just any just cup a, of water. a sphere. <laughs> <laughs> we have the elemental gem. That's good enough. I don't want to be uh, here yeah. at all. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> As you travel up the uh, exit corridor, leaving the ice cavern behind, Petunia tells you a tale about the dragon Frostbane that she remembers. During the Great War, an ancient white dragon known as Frostbane was mortally wounded in the skies above the Star Spire mountain range. She fell and crashed into the mountainside as a final attack against the fiendish legions of Bael Taroth. She released the elemental energy within her in a massive icy explosion, transforming a huge portion of the area into solid ice. Petunia surmises that the remnants of her elemental power still linger in this mountainside, giving form to the ice, which then absorbed memories from the humans that fell within its walls. Petunia? What happened to the Petunia that was in your host body before you were there? She does not remember that. Have you heard the name Valente before? She has not heard the name Valiente. Valiente. So there was, a, there was a you that lived a lot before your consciousness got put into your body. What happened to that person? She wonders that same thing. You rest. exit the ice cavern and find yourself atop a impossibly tall mountain of the Star Spire on a very wide, flat plateau on the mountain summit. Ice uh, crystals jut up from the ground, uh, and the snow upon the summit has hardened into not quite as slippery an ice surface as the ice cavern you were in, but definitely a hard, icy, packed tundra that you now stand upon at the top of one of the Star Spire mountains. As uh, Hazel exits the hole, uh, she looks back into the whole cave and yells, I will return for you, Soko. <laughs> We're going to wrap it up no. for today. This has been Dynamite D&D, &D, an adventure through the heart of ice. Uh, the heroes have traveled through an ice cave and emerged atop the Star Spire mountain range. 
They are one elemental gem heavier, and they have found a couple of... of actually, you used both... You used two of the three spell scrolls you found in that uh, dungeon, so good for you, using your items. <laughs> what will happen next time on Dynamite D&D? Will they finally find an outcropping of mithril? Will Petunia ever regain her shape-shifting powers? Will more information come to light about the mysterious Ender Archons and the Arcosian countermeasure? Find out next time on Dynamite D&D. Once again, going through the list, that one is Paige, Eden Corpse Nutter, Gildan Guard. <laughs> that one is Curly, Bye, Hazel everybody. Ground Swell. That one is Sam, Robert Ribons. And that one is Aaron, Corv, Corvidus. We are Dynamite D&D, and we will see you next time. Once again, check out the Twitter. Check out the Discord. If you really like what you see, check out the Patreon. We got all three of those. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you.